If you have a cruise plan to Disney's Lookout Key at Lighthouse Point or thinking of booking one, we're here to ensure your trip is smooth sailing. So whether you're a seasoned cruiser or this is your first time hitting the high seas, stay one step ahead of everyone else on board with our expert 25 Disney Lookout Key at Lighthouse Point tips and tricks up next. Welcome aboard, cruisers. I'm Don B from Eat Sleep Cruise, where we help you see the world one port at a time. And of course, if you have any questions at all about Disney Cruise Line or Lookout Key at Lighthouse Point, please leave them in the comment section below as we answer every single question. Now, like anything Disney Cruise Line, popular experiences and shore excursions sell out quickly. So booking them early is crucial if you have your heart set on activities other than those included on Lookout Key. Cruisers can book experiences as early as 130 days in advance, depending on your stateroom category and Castaway Club status, though most cruisers won't be able to book tours or other upgrades until 105 to 75 days before embarkation day. Being proactive and booking early ensures you get the experiences you want, and you can usually cancel within a few days of the sailing and secure a refund if you change your mind. Perhaps one of the most important Disney Lookout Key at Lighthouse Point tips is to be ready to get off the ship once it's expected to be cleared. After all, the early cruiser gets the Sun Lounger. For our Disney Fantasy Cruise to Lookout Key, our poor arrival time was 8.30 a.m. and plenty of cruisers were ready and eager to explore. The good news is that the private destination does have a pier, so you don't need to worry about getting a tender boat ashore like some other cruise line private islands. The bad news, though, is that the pier is quite long. It's over a half a mile walk to the trans stop, and there's no shade or places to sit and rest along the way. Another benefit of getting off the ship early is that you can enjoy the cooler temperatures, relatively speaking. It will get even hotter as the day goes on, so if you start your day early, you won't feel as bad coming back after lunch or early in the afternoon if you get too overheated as you've already spent most of the morning ashore enjoying all that Lookout Key has to offer. We found it very easy to get around Lookout Key. Paved walkways and wooden boardwalks line the beach, and the entire area from the Nature Trail to Serenity Bay is essentially one straight line. Cruisers can go from one end of the resort to the other using the wide and easy to navigate walkways. These paths are intertwined with bars, restrooms, food pavilions, and shops with signs pointing you in the right direction along the way. So even for those who are a little directionally challenged, it's hard to get lost on the island. That said, there are also plenty of cast members who are happy to help provide further directions. To help with your planning, check the video description down below where we have a link to our complete guide to Lookout Key that includes a downloadable PDF version of the Lookout Key at Lighthouse Point map. Another one of our tips to ensure you have a great time at Lookout Key is to bring a refillable water bottle with you ashore. Near the buffets, there are drinking stations that have several included beverages. Along with water, many of these offer soda, lemonade, iced tea, and vitamin water. These stations are open throughout the day, not just when the buffet is open. So make sure to fill up early and often. You may also want to get one last refill before heading back to the ship. Between the tram ride and walking along that pier, you may get thirsty. Of course, you can always ask for a glass of water at one of the bars too, but a Yeti or Stanley type thermos will certainly keep your drink colder for longer. The family beach at Lookout Key offers plenty of loungers and umbrellas, while the Serenity Bay adults only area is much smaller. At both locations, these chairs and umbrellas are free to all guests. However, only a few rows of loungers are right next to the shoreline. Unlike Castaway Key, the island has a large sand dune lining the beach. Thus, many of the loungers at Lookout Key are actually before the dunes. This means guests need to climb over the dunes when they want to head into the water. You don't have to worry about it, there are stairs and ramps to do this with ease, but it does mean that you won't be able to see your belongings from the water. The best way to get one of those coveted loungers right next to the water again, is to get off the ship early. You'll probably also have better luck finding chairs on Family Beach than you will on Serenity Bay Beach. Surprisingly, the Wi-Fi works great throughout Lookout Key. That has not been our experience on Disney Cruise Line's other private island, Castaway Key. 
the Wi-Fi on that private island only works well near the pier. Thus, we're pleasantly surprised with the Wi-Fi signal on Lookout Key at Lighthouse Point. It even worked on parts of the more secluded Nature Trail. Of course, cruisers do need to purchase a Wi-Fi package to use the internet while on the ship and ashore. Most Disney cruise ships now offer unlimited Wi-Fi plans per device, but they are pricey. You'll want to check with your cell phone carrier too to see whether you'll have cell phone service on the island. But even without an internet package or cell phone service, guests can still access the Navigator app. With the app, cruisers can view the daily schedule of activities and use its functions like messaging others in your travel party. This is especially useful now as DCL no longer provides paper copies of the daily program. Without the app, you'll not know what is happening on the island or on the ship during your cruise. Be sure to download the app prior to setting sail. In the mad rush from Mabrika Cove to the Goombe Cultural Center, it's easy to overlook the island's coffee shop, Mangroves and Go, which is tucked off to one side near the turbo boat charters before the tram to the main section of Lookout Key. Unlike many private islands, this venue offers espresso-based drinks and other signature non-alcoholic and alcoholic beverages. No trip to Lookout Key is complete without a sweet and floral Junkanoo latte. If you're not a coffee drinker, the stand also serves local draft beers and any Disney fan's favorite treat, Dole Whip. All drinks here are an upcharge. If you miss the stand on your way to the beach, you can always grab a coffee for the return walk down the pier to the ship. Either way, we like this addition to Lookout Key and hope Disney adds a coffee shop to its other private island. It wouldn't be a Disney cruise without character meet and greets. Disney Lookout Key at Lighthouse Point is no different. Meet and greets were near the True True Barbecue during our two visits. This is the only place to get pictures of the Disney characters in their exclusive bohemian outfits. While times will vary, during our two stops, characters were present for about four hours during the day, rotating in and out. I was able to get my photo with Mickey about two hours after the ship was cleared. So like many of our lookout key tips, we suggest getting pictures earlier in the day before the lines get too long and you get too sweaty. Of course, check the daily schedule before heading to the island to see when your favorite Disney friend will be there. You will need your key to the world card or your Disney Band Plus to get on and off the cruise ship. We prefer using the Disney Band Plus because it's easy and convenient. There's no need to fumble around your pocket or bags looking for a card. The Disney Band Plus is especially beneficial if you have kids. We already had our Disney Band Plus, the same as Magic Band Plus, from our trips to Walt Disney World, so there was no need to buy a new one for this cruise. Much like the theme parks, once ashore at Lookout Key, you can continue using the band to make purchases at the bars, coffee shop, and the retail stores. Several little touches on Lookout Key make this island unique from other cruise line private destinations. One of them is a daily Junkanoo parade. This traditional bohemian celebration comes to life twice a day at the Goombe Cultural Center. During our visits, Rush, a Junkanoo celebration, occurred at noon and 2.30 p.m. Filled with colorful costumes, horns, percussion musicians, and maybe some Disney characters, this is a family-friendly activity you don't want to miss during your day ashore. Along with the Junkanoo celebration, other hints of bohemian culture and history are embedded throughout the island. At the Goombe Cultural Center, guests can learn more about the history of the bohemian people through family activities, presentations, and exhibits. The resort also has QR codes that provide more information about the island, its people, and its flora and fauna. At the Treasures of Eleuthera, guests can purchase art and handmade goods from local artisans and artists. Even the buffet has bohemian specialties like freshly marinated red snapper. Disney Cruise Line worked extensively with local architects and artists to design the buildings and decor for Lookout Key. We really appreciated the nautically inspired architecture and bright, colorful decor. To get to the Goombe Cultural Center and the majority of the attractions at Lookout Key, guests must take an approximately 10 minute tram ride from Mabrika Cove. From here, guests wanting an adults only experience will want to head left or north to Serenity Bay. The rest of the resort is considered family beach. In our experience, guests were more inclined to grab loungers closer to the tram stop. Thus, it tends to be busier near the watering hole bar and the rush out gush out family water play area. It was much quieter with more loungers and beachfront property heading down the beach 
to the right of the Goombe tram stop. The closer you head towards the nature trail and reef and wreck bar, the less crowds you'll find. This is where we spent most of our second day at this destination. This section of beach is also near the Play Play Pavilion, Sebastian's Cove, Kids Area, and the True True Barbecue Buffet Station. Unlike Castaway Key, there's only one shop on Lookout Key selling island and cruise line branded merchandise. Don't be surprised if you notice a line of cruisers at this store when you arrive at the Goombe Cultural Center tram stop. Disney Tings sells a variety of Lookout Key souvenirs and keepsakes, from t-shirts to lounge flies, spirit jerseys, and Christmas ornaments. And like anything Disney, specific items and popular sizes can sell out quickly. So if you have your heart set on snagging some merchandise, we suggest you hit the store early in the day. Unfortunately, this means you'll probably have to wait in another long checkout line. If you prefer not wasting your morning, the lines will be shorter later in the day. However, we did wait too long on our first visit and could not find our size in a particular t-shirt I wanted. Luckily, they were restocked on our second visit. Perhaps one of the biggest letdowns on Lookout Key is the adults only Serenity Bay. Unlike Disney's other private island, the Serenity Bay here is small and not very secluded. In fact, cruisers share the same shoreline. So there's only a slight separation between Family Beach and Serenity Bay Beach. Getting loungers in this adults area also proved challenging during our cruise. If you are not one of the first cruisers off the ship, the odds are not in your favor for getting a lounger next to the water. In fact, finding a lounger anywhere at Serenity Bay was challenging by midday. The seating and dining area near the barbecue and Blue Hole Bar are also limited. We waited nearly 25 minutes in line for food and need to share a table with other guests for lunch. If you're traveling with tweens or teens, they might be a bit bored on Lookout Key, as there are no dedicated areas for them, like on Castaway Key. Younger kids, ages 3 to 10, have Sebastian's Cove. This youth area includes a Little Mermaid themed splash pad and plenty of soft sand for playing in the sun. Youth activity staff also host organized activities and events. So parents can leave their kids and enjoy some of the island without their junior cruisers for a few hours without any worry. There's also the rush out, gush out water play area. Again, this splash pad is designed for younger kids. It features two slides, water drums, fountains, and more. However, the island does not have an equivalent of vibe or edge for older kids. Currently, the Play Play Pavilion doubles as a meeting spot for some organized activities for teens and tweens. The Play Play Pavilion is the only sports area on Lookout Key. It's open to all cruisers and features equipment like soccer nets and oversized games such as Connect Four and Jenga. Unlike Castaway Key, there are currently no volleyball or basketball courts or an equivalent to the Inda Shade games at Lookout Key. On Lookout Key, there is a snorkel rental hut where guests can rent equipment for $38. However, unlike Castaway Key, Lookout Key has no separate section of water dedicated as a snorkeling area. Thus, guests wishing to snorkel will have to do so among everyone else. On Lookout Key, we were told guests could stay within the bounded area and snorkel along the entire beach. But given Disney's conservation efforts, the company did not alter the seabed or coral around the beach. So you won't find any buried treasures or Disney souvenirs at the bottom of Lookout Key like you do on the snorkel trail at Castaway Key. In your morning rush to be ready to get off the ship, the one thing you don't have to worry about is grabbing towels. Unlike some cruise lines that make you sign towels in and out on the ship, Disney Cruise Line makes getting towels quick and easy. Once off the ship, several cast members will be handing out towels as soon as you get off the tram at Goombay Cultural Center. There are towel return stands throughout the island where you can drop them off. If you need more fresh towels during the day, you can grab them near the tram stop. While you don't need to pack a towel, make sure to bring the suntan lotion. It gets scorching on the island. While loungers have umbrellas, the island does not have much additional shade. The dining pavilions offer some relief from the sun, as well as the Goombe Cultural Center Pavilion. However, the walking paths, nature trail, and food stations are in direct sun. There is also no air conditioning on the island. All the bars and restaurants have al fresco seating. The same is true of the stores and cultural center. While shaded, 
there's no climate control in any of the buildings. This is yet another reason why we suggest heading out early. So when afternoon sun glares down, you can head back to the ship to cool off, knowing that you've already had a day of fun on Lookout Key. Cruisers looking to do an island pub tour are in luck. Lookout Key features six watering holes, many with signature menus. Three bars on Family Beach serve the standard island drink menu. The island's signature drinks are the Eleuthera Euphoria and Butterfly Switcha. Other mixed drinks, as well as a selection of beers and wines, are also available. Guests can also get frozen concoctions from the Sensational Smoothies Bar. The non-alcoholic specialty drinks here include the Pineapple Pleaser, which is made with Dole Whip, of course. At Serenity Bay, guests are treated to a unique menu at the Blue Hole Bar. The venue offers some unique signature drinks, like the Shipwrecker or Smash Cocktails. As mentioned, there's also the Mangroves & Go Coffee Shop at Mabrika Cove, with its own unique menu. Even if you're not a fan of coffee, there are still some adult beverages you can grab here too to round out that pub crawl. There are two cabana areas on Lookout Key. For adults, there are cabanas at Serenity Bay. These cabanas are located at the very front of Serenity Bay, right off the walkway. These cabanas have access to the same bar and barbecue lunch as the rest of those relaxing in this adults-only area. However, the cabanas for families are actually at Mabrika Cove. If you're not paying attention, you can miss them. After walking through the security pavilion, most guests will head towards the tram station. But if you have one of those cabanas, you'll actually head in the opposite direction towards the water. Once at Mabrika Cove Cabanas, guests have access to their own bar and restaurant for the day. The food and drink offerings look pretty similar to what's available at Family Beach. The benefit here is that this area is reserved for cabana guests only, and you don't have to make the trek over just to eat lunch. While these cabanas are more private, and the beach offers some amazing views of the ship, they're not next to anything else. So if you want to buy souvenirs at the shop, or your little kids want to play at Sebastian's Cove or Rush Out Gush Out, you'll need to take the tram over to the rest of the resort. There are three buffets on the island. Two buffets are on Family Beach, True True Barbecue, and True True Two Barbecue. In the adults only area, there's the Serenity Bay Barbecue. During our cruise, lunch was served at these eateries from 11.30 a.m. to 2 p.m. For the most part, all three buffets serve the same menu. Items include offerings like hamburgers and hot dogs, and sides like potato salad. There was also rotisserie chicken and ribs. Some bohemian specialties included marinated grilled fish and bohemian pigeon peas and rice with marinated chicken. In Serenity Bay, guests could request a steak from the grill, similar to upgraded offerings at the barbecue on Castaway Key. There's also an off-menu spicy chicken breast. However, the Choo Choo Buffet offers a similar spicy chicken sandwich. So for the most part, the restaurants are the same minus the steak. For those with allergy restrictions, speak to your waiter on the ship the night before arriving at the island. There's a special allergy menu and custom food offerings that can be picked up at the Choo Choo 2 Buffet. Another one of Lookout Key's biggest drawbacks is the flies. These insects swarm the food stands and the seating areas next to all three buffets, which is a huge issue. While the cruise line has tabletop swatters, these offer little relief. While we thought the food was better than most cruise line private islands, finishing our meals was nearly impossible without constant swatting. Some cruisers cover their food with napkins to ward off the flies. While this method sort of works, it makes eating that much more difficult. We're unsure if it was just the time of year, or if this will be a persistent issue on the island. While Lookout Key is near completion, portions of the destination are still in development. According to cast members, bike rentals should be available in a few months. Honestly, we're skeptical that they will let cruisers on their own for a while, as many of the roads between Mabrika Cove and the rest of the resort are still under construction, and portions are still closed off to cruisers. Currently, the only way to bike around Lookout Key is to purchase a guided shore excursion. Likewise, there are plans for a Lookout Key 5K similar to the experience on Castaway Key. Again, given paths are not complete, this 5K is not officially open. For the time being, there are several completed walkways and the nature trail, offering plenty of opportunities to get some exercise. If you are watching this video, odds are you already know about the pier situation at Lookout Key. Once cruisers make the trek down the pier, they must wait to take a tram from Abrika Cove to the Goombay Cultural Center tram stop where the rest of the amenities are located. Trams run frequently and there shouldn't be too much of a wait. 
While it was a little chaotic, we were able to get on the second arriving tram upon heading ashore. This tram ride is approximately 10 minutes. As mentioned, construction is not yet complete, so cruisers are not currently allowed to walk from one location to the next. One of the island's unique features is the nature trail. The main entrance is just past the reef and wreck bar. This broad, compacted dirt path lets visitors explore more of the island. Most of the path is relatively flat and even as well. If you're up for an adventure, it's a nice little walk. Informational stands along the way provide information about the native wildlife. Also, QR codes can be scanned throughout the path to learn more about the local flora and fauna. Midway through the path, guests can make a U-turn to return to civilization. Or, where the path diverges, guests who are game for an uphill challenge can head towards the namesake lighthouse. While not as impressive as similar structures on other islands, guests can enjoy some lovely coastal views while near the lighthouse. For all those wilderness explorers out there, the path then leads to a more natural walking trail to the lesser developed part of Lookout Key. We didn't venture this far, but saw others going for it. But now that you know the 25 insider tips and tricks for Lookout Key at Lighthouse Point, we need to find you the right Disney cruise going to this island. But if you're brand new to cruising, or at least brand new to Disney Cruise Line, you might have some questions about what's included in a Disney cruise. Well, lucky for you, we have a complete look at what's included in a Disney cruise, plus what will cost you extra. In that video, we break down all the costs associated with cruising, plus some of those hidden fees and additional charges the cruise line doesn't tell you about. That way you can set up your budget so you know exactly how much you'll spend on your cruise and you don't return home with sticker shock.